Adam keeps putting that freaking thing on that one, right? What's that? No, it's because last time that's what happened the other day. It, w it was on the mic one. Mm -hmm. You PM the app because you get us. Everything you want to hear from the voice of Cerritos College. WPMD on the net, where people make a difference. Good morning, everyone, and welcome to another edition of the Falcon Spotlight. I'm your host, Rob Flores, here, and we are here at WPMD Studios, located at Cerritos College, Norwalk, California. At this time, I'd like my guest to please introduce himself. Hi, I'm Gustavo Lopez, and I'm a freelance editor with Telemarks and formerly editor-in-chief. Cool. Now, um, is this, uh, what are you, a sophomore now? What semester is um, this? Um, it's my second year, so I think that's sophomore. I'm not sure anymore. Um, I'm always confused by that. I, I always thought I was like, I'm two, three years here. It doesn't matter to me. Cool. Now, I like to always start off from the beginning, uh, with my guests, you know, um, you know, during K-12 and stuff, uh, did you have a particular interest, a hobby? Were you uh, in stuff? Uh, one bad habit I, I developed early on and I still keep to right now is, uh, especially during lectures, I don't pay attention. Um, I know that sounds really bad, but I would always end up drawing or writing um, in my classes from elementary to middle school to high school. and. Uh, it was mostly out of boredom. I would just get bored listening to, to professors or teachers talk all day, you know, every day. And I would just draw um, stick figure wars or uh, eventually I started drawing like Pikachu and Pokemon stuff. Uh, and then and in terms of writing, I would rewrite the endings to video games that I really liked. Like the first one was Halo. It always b bothered me that uh, all the Marines die in the first one. You're like, oh man, all, all, all these people are dead. And I would, uh, that's how I got into writing, I guess. You could say it was uh, fan fiction. Cool. And tell me about the drawing. Uh, the drawings, um, it really began with just little stick people fighting each other. Um, I was always interested in, in making things like come to life in, that, that were in my head onto paper. And obviously, when I was little, I couldn't really do it. I, was just, I would stick to t stick figures. And eventually, I, I started slowing down and... Uh, drawing uh, uh, cartoon characters uh, or figures or uh, Pokemon, Digimon, uh, Dragon Ball Z, not so much. I know that for a lot of people that, that I know that draw, that, that was their, one of their main starting points in terms of drawing. But I was like, no, nah, I was never really into uh, um, uh, Dragon Ball Z. Uh, what I always used to draw was uh, like demons or, or like creatures, like weird creatures that would come into my head. Um, and uh, eventually, uh, I discovered uh, Lovecraft. H.P. Lovecraft is a writer, and when I read his stuff, I, I was just blown away. I I, I couldn't because it was so new to me. It was just this weird horror type stuff where it was it was cosmic, where humans weren't the center of it. And because at that point, I was always used to, to horror stories or reading uh, writing in general that was just very human centric. But in Lovecraft, he was just like, no, 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 aliens created us. But mostly for food, like we were just there. We were here by accident. Um, so yeah, that's one of the weird things that influenced me in terms of my writing and my drawing. But you did see Dragon Ball Z, right? Um, yeah, I used to watch it in Spanish. It was I always I would always laugh because um, his the his name is Kakarot or whatever. I, I don't know what his he has like two names. I don't know. And in Spanish it was Kakaroto, and it just sounded funny to me. It just sounded like <laughs> someone trying to mash together the words poop and carrot in Spanish. It was just funny. And my mom would make fun of me. She would be like, why are you watching this? This is bad. I'm like, I know. I don't like it. It takes like 40 episodes for like a fight to be over. And I, I, that's why I stopped watching it. I know. I saw that. What I saw one DVD. It says the best fights of Goku. And it's already like almost at the end. And I'm like, I thought it was the whole fight. Yeah, like um, they would like like fight for like a cool like 30 seconds. And then they would like pause and like go on to like these rambling monologues about like, Oh my God! I'm so powerful, whatever. And I'm like, no, I'm gonna stop you and save the world, and go on forever. And then it was just annoying. That's why. Like, and I was a very impatient little kid, so I was just like, I don't, I don't, I'm done with this. But um, who are your favorite over there? Of Goku or, or Dragon Ball Z? Yeah. Or? Um, I like Piccolo. I don't know why. It was just like, cause he he just stood out to me. It was like, wow, these people are all human. And there's like this green guy just walking around like, and no one questions it. It was like, what? Like, 
first of all, who is he? Like, where is he from? I, like, I never understood that. So he he's the one that like kind of stood out to me. He was very stoic, very like, um, like he was like the moral compass sort of of Goku. Like he was a level headed one apparently. Cool, cool. Now after high school, um, did you know the plan? What you wanted to do? What school you wanted to go to? What major? Uh, in terms of high school, no, not really. Cause uh, late in high school, actually, I found out uh, I was undocumented. Which is a weird thing to find out, like, really at, at the end of high school when you're kind of, like, old enough to know better. But I was trying to get a job uh, through the work office at high sc- in my high school. And they're like, okay, fill this out and get your social security. I'm like, all right. And I go home and ask my mom, hey, mom, what's my social security number? And she's like, oh, you don't have one. And I'm like, huh? Like, what are you talking about? Like, yeah, you were born here. I'm like, oh, like, oh, okay. Like, um, how do I get a job? And I'm like, oh, you don't. Like, it's... You, you can't work legally here. I'm like, oh, okay. So it was just weird to, to see it that way. And then uh, when I started doing research on, on going to school, I found out that I couldn't get financial aid. So it, I was just like, oh, my God, how am I going to pay for this? Because um, she's, she's a single mother, so I'm like, oh, she's not going to pay for all this. This is a lot of money. And so for right after high school, I graduated, and I went to actually um, ELAC uh, for journalism and uh, criminal investigation. And I didn't like the campus there. It was very um, high schoolish. Like I felt like no one was taking their education seriously. And after that, like I just I I because I, I paid everything out of pocket, and I was really broke. And uh, so I just I stopped going to school. Um, uh, my girlfriend and I at the time we just uh, lounged about, watched like shows, or uh, went to the li- We used to go, uh, go to the library a lot and just read a bunch of random things. Uh, and we, then we started volunteering at this middle school, but throughout that time, I really thought like, man, like, um, I should just join the military or something, you know? Like, and, and I actually called, I called the Marines. They were like, oh no, you need a soldier. I'm like, wow, really? Like, I can't even like, you know, fight for my country or whatever. So I was like, okay, so I just stayed here, you know, lounging about, uh, helping my grandpa because he has a construction company. So like, I would do that. And I hated it. I mean, I, I, that's how I got my Xbox 360 at the time. I, I, I worked with him for a while, and I, that's how I paid for it. And it was awesome because it was, like, mine. Um, but right after, I, for two years, I didn't go to school. I just volunteered at, at a middle school, and it was, it was nice. You know, I got to work with kids and teachers, and I got to know them really well. And uh, it was nice to know that some of them had gone through the same experiences as I had, you know, in terms of, like, growing up in certain neighborhoods growing up poor or like single parents or you know things like that and after that um actually i i think my my girlfriend at the time uh maria for actually getting me to uh come to cerritos because she she started here uh actually she had been going for a while now uh since uh 2012 i think i'm not sure um and she's the one, yeah, you should come to Cerritos, you know, I can help you uh, enroll and it would be easier. And Elac, it's closer and, you know, we could take the one bus here. And so that's how I started here. I remember I took a, an acting class here, which is random because I, I, I sort of drifted through my first semester here. My first two semesters, I just took random classes. Um, and then eventually she, she got involved in the newspaper, Telemarks. And she would tell me all her, her work at, uh, on, on the online site. And it was just like, wow, this is cool. Like, you're actually putting in work. You know, you, it feels like a job. You know, you're not getting paid. But, you know, it's, it's something you, you pick up with uh, certain skills. And um, I would visit her. I would eat lunch with her uh, during the, the, my breaks and classes. And that's how I met uh, Denny. Uh, he was a news editor at the time, I think. Um, and eventually he and Maria got me to join. Like, oh, you know, I'm going to join. It, this is going to be great. And I joined as uh, just random staff, and then eventually I got into news copy editing. And it was one of the most fun and frustrating times at the same time because uh, we had certain writers that would write, like, really long pieces. And it, since it's news, there's certain language you can't use where it's, like, uh, very... Uh, very like adjectives that you can't use where like oh this is a beautiful day or whatever it's it's it's, it's one of the main things is like who says that you know who 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 says it's a beautiful day so in news we kind of cut down on that kind of language like it works for certain pieces like in terms of uh like anecdotal like beginnings or uh features where you do features on people or like clubs or events or something but for news it's just we cut that down 
And that particular writer, he would get mad. He, he would uh, uh, argue with me. And I'd be like, hey, man, I'm just doing my job. Like, I'm, it's nothing personal. Uh, it's just the, the rules are that, that, you know, this kind of language is kind of editorializing is what we call it. And from there, I got more involved. Uh, it, it, at that time, um, everyone, everyone we had on staff, from editors to just the staff, it, it was like a little group of friends. Like it, we were just hanging, having fun, hanging around, you know, doing work, playing music. Um, and that's how I felt like I, I belonged because I had been in uh, the newspaper in high school and I always had a love-hate thing with it. I was like, for one year, I would be like, oh, man, this is great. I love it. And then the next year, I'd be like, I hate this. I want to leave. And I would leave and then I'd come back. But for this, I felt like this is great. Like these people are really passionate about what they're doing, um, and so I stayed on for another year, oh, another semester, and then I became news editor. And it was very scary, you know, because it was I went from like this guy that didn't know anyone or anything. I didn't know who who, who Linda Lacey was at the time. I was like, uh, I remember I interviewed her at an event. I'm like, oh, I'm sorry. Can I get your name and position, please? And she's like, oh, I'm the, the, the president of Cerritos College, Linda Lacey. I'm like, oh, my God, I can't believe I just met the president of, of Cerritos College, and I just asked her the dumbest question ever. And I was so embarrassed. After that. I, I, do th I did that a lot with a lot of people. I'm like, oh, God, who are you? What's your position? Um, and as news editor, it was funny because the first week, uh, editor, the energy we had uh, was Denny. And... The first week I came in and he's like, hey man, like over the week, over the break, uh, three people died, like three, three people on campus oh, that, that were here. Or that, they didn't die here, but they were like students and like a coach, I think. And then at the time it was uh, the chief of police. He's like, oh yeah, these three people died over the, the like, it was like a, in the span of like a few weeks, they had died uh, pretty close together. And I'm like, oh my God, like I, you know, I, I had never covered anything like that. I'd never done anything about deaths or, you know. And so uh, we split up the work. He did the one with uh, uh, the, a soccer player. I forgot her name, but she had died. Um, and then someone else did, like, the coach, this, uh, this a, a retired coach. Um, and I, I got uh, Chief Buckwicky, a Buckwicky, I'm sorry. And it was very, uh, like, you, like, it was just straight into the fire. There was no preparation, you know. And I, you, I learned how to, how you have to deal with this tough situation where people are, talking about someone they know personally because I didn't know the chief because um, I, I was just a new student and had never even got a chance to talk to him and so I had one of I had to talk to the uh, at, that, at that time I think it was Captain uh, uh, Gallivan uh, you know how how close they were and you know how their experiences with each other and you know with other students and it was just it was crazy to do it you know like where you had to be a reporter and you know, get the facts and get who this person was and how he died. Um, that was the hardest part, hard, covering the fact that uh, he had apparently killed himself. And it was just like, oh my god, like how do you how do you ask someone like, hey, you know, this person killed themselves? Like, what do you feel about that? You know, it's just it's just a weird, like when you out of context, like that's a dumb question. You know, like how do you think they're gonna feel? But you know, as a reporter, you're like, yeah, I have to ask this. And then at the same time, you're human. You know, like. You might not have known this person, but you had to have some kind of uh, sympathy for uh, this person's family and the friends that you're interviewing or the people you're interviewing uh, that because they're going through something. And it was just very, very uh, harrowing to do it. Um, and I remember I, I dropped my classes at the time. I had like three classes. Um, I dropped them because I was like, it was a lot of work at the very first week. And so I just uh, it was just a full on tile marks at the time. And then um, it was a fun semester. We got to learn a lot. It was just uh, harrowing because I got to meet a lot of things, know a lot of people, and I got I went to go a lot to a lot of things like uh, ACC meetings, board trustees meetings, and I hate to say it, but like before, I was just like, oh my god, these people know what they're doing. These uh, the student government knows what they're doing. These board trustees knows what they're doing. They're, you know, they're 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 fairly like well placed individuals. You know, they're competent, and then. As news editor, I got to cover them and, and see them more. And, uh, and uh, for student government, you could you could kind of let it go because they're students. You know, they're just they're just learning how to do these things, how to uh, certain procedures in terms of how you conduct meetings and such. And then so you can kind of let that go. But then sometimes you got to realize, okay, sometimes some of these things seem very personal, and it, it seems more like a weird 
<laughs> Game of Thrones thing where everyone's trying to like push their own little agenda. And, you know, it's just, it, it's weird to see that. And then for the Board of Trustees, it was weird to see them argue in a way where it was like not constructive. You know, you'd think that they would like argue a little better and at certain issues they wouldn't like talk over each other. And, uh, but they, they kind of, no, I mean, they're human too. So, you know, they, they, they do that. You know, they're not just like these weird robots that um, like, no, we have to discuss this issue in a civilized manner. Sometimes they, they get passionate about certain issues, whether they agree with each other or not. We got a quick commercial break. We'll be right back, folks. <laughs> I don't want to ramble on. <laughs> no, okay, it's good. It's, um, some guests, you know, they're like nervous and stuff. I mean, I like talking. I talk kind of fast, though. That's the problem. I, I catch myself and try to That's stuff. good because there's more material. Because, um, like, Casey listens to all of our shows. Mm-hmm. And he's, you know, like, getting a little bit more out of it. Mm-hmm. No, I mean, I'll, I'll give you a lot if you want me to. It's yeah. just, it depends on what you ask me and you know, how much you want me to give Like, you. at the 15 minute mark and, like, at the 40 mark, they have us do commercials. Okay. But I'll it's just, like, two minutes. I'll keep track of the time. Rock and roll has been the most influential form of music ever heard, affecting not only the arts, but fashion, politics, social mores, and more. Mike Stark covers all of it with Rock's music, Best Radio Magazine, Rock 50, where you'll hear the sounds of rock and roll's best work beyond the music itself, interviews, information, and analysis. And you get the best of it when you start your day with the best of Rock and Roll 50, with Mike Stark every morning at 6 Pacific, only at WPMD on the net, or the voice of Cerritos College, where people make a difference. I'm Marlene, and I'm lucky. I have macular degeneration. That's when the blood vessels in your eyes leak. And yeah, they, the first one, because uh, it's one pre-recorded uh, PSA, one live promo, and then a recorded smoked. promo, mm-hmm. then at the next time it's not a, treatment for it. a script Every promo, month, it's a I script PSA, so you gotta held open by a switch over. Then the doctor takes a needle and injects medicine right into my eyes. The first time the needle went in, it sounded like an egg cracking. Every time I feel and sometimes the ACC will uh, like have, I, I guess, like some I stuff though that like Casey Miller does. Yeah, that's cool. my tip is or like other departments as well. Going through all this, and I'm the lucky one. Smoking can cause macular degeneration. You can quit. For free help, call one eight hundred quit now. A message from the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention. And we are back here on the Falcon Spotlight, ladies and gentlemen. I'm your host, Rob Flores, here at Cerritos College, Norwalk, California. And remember, uh, Falcon Spotlight has a fan page. All you got to do is go to um, Facebook and look up Cerritos College Falcon Spotlight. You could also look us up on uh, uh, YouTube as well, the show, to get the um, latest episodes of the videos. Now, um, also, you know, how can people reach you, um, social media and stuff? Me? Yeah. <laughs> Sorry. Um, I'm gonna I'm gonna mention my non-professional Twitter because I think people think it's funny. I haven't used it in a while because I haven't had time to do it. But it's called uh, Gus at Gus underscore reads, um, and I started that one because uh, mm, uh, one of my exes used to read a lot of romance novels. Like the cheesy ones, you know, like the the really cheesy, like Fabio cover, like uh, romance novels, and I would I would tease her for it, and she was like, hey, you know, there's there's a certain blog I follow that where where they read these things on their Twitter, and you know they they make it funny, they make funny comments about it, and I think you should do it with like uh, books, you know, she she, obviously, she didn't say romance because you know she she hated when I used to tease her about it, but uh, I was like, I'm gonna do that, but I'm gonna do something where it's gonna get people's attention right away. And I remember I had read this article on uh, crack.com about like the weirdest things people write, and most most of them are Amazon like free books. 
And one of the weirdest things was uh, dinosaur erotica. Really weird stuff. And so, okay, I'm, I'm going to try this. I'm, I'm going to read this book. This, this, I'm going to buy this book for a dollar uh, on my Kindle and read it and tweet about it. And it was um, the, like the weirdest, cringiest experience I've ever had in terms of reading. Because it was just, it, it was weird. It was just dinosaurs and humans. And I couldn't, I only got through like a chapter before I was like, okay, I'm going to stop tweeting and just kind of take a break and uh, just, and I never went back to it. I, I was like, nope, nope, nope. Like, I, I don't know how much more I can, of this I can take. So you mentioned, um, uh, you covered uh, like a, a suicide story, mm -hmm. um, but you've held other positions as well. Um like, uh, tell me about the process for, like, when you got selected for um, online and uh, chief. Okay, so I'll go in chronological order. So it was editor-in-chief and then online. Um, for for editor-in-chief, you have to apply. So it's basically like a job interview where you submit an application, uh, uh, a letter, or basically saying, hey, you, you know, why do you want to do this? Why do you feel like this is the position you want to run for? What's your experience, you know? And then, and that's the easy part. That is the easiest part of the, the, the whole process. The hardest part is the interview itself, because you're interviewed by the advisor, uh, Rich Cameron, the uh, uh, lab aide, Alicia Edquist, who was also uh, online, and then she was a reporter, too, on Talamarks. And then two former editors. Uh, I think one of them was Herson. I can't forget his last name. And some other guy. Uh, I f but that guy, though, the one whose name I forget, he was like this chubby guy. I think he, he had red hair. But he was the one that grilled me the most. It was the weirdest thing. Uh, and it was just like, oh, God, he caught me off, off guard. Like, there were good questions, don't get me wrong. They were really solid uh, questions that, that uh, like, threw me off. They, they put me on my back. Uh, one of them was, he asked uh, was, uh, was how, because how, I, I made a plan about how to increase our readership and, and our social media aspect and all that, and our, and our online numbers, because we have a website which uh, people always, always call Talonet, which is grating to me. And it's like, no, no, it's Talon Marks, not Talonet. Um, and, you know, and, and that's as far as I went in that, in, in terms of that plan. Like, oh, yeah, you know, we're going to uh, make, like, promote it more on our personal, like, social media, this and that. And then he, he asked me, okay, but how are you going to get your staff to do it? And I'm like, wow, um, like, that's... My, my my thought didn't go all that far, and I, that was one of the one of the, like the two or three questions that had me like stuttering and mumbling, like, like backtracking, you know. Um, and once that happened, I, it was a, a good interview. <laughs> one of the things that another thing they asked me was, um, how far are you willing to go for for to cover an event or get an interview? And you know, and they asked me, they put gave me a scenario where, like it was, say you were at a meeting. Um, and they're, they're telling you, you can't cover it, you have to leave, or we're going to call the police. Um, and I explained to them, well, first of all, uh, depending, depending on what kind of meeting it is, so if it were like a board of seas meeting or a ACC government meeting, those are open meetings, and they're covered by the uh, Brown Act, which permits me to be there and anyone from the public. And, you know, I would basically explain my rights to them and saying that that, that would kind of be illegal. And... I remember they told me that someone else had, had responded to the same question. I'm like, oh yeah, I'll, uh, I'll, I would be willing to get arrested and all this. And I'm like, oh, that's. I mean, I would, I would, I, I would go to that point, but like, I would, I would do everything possible to avoid the conflict. And then, you know, if I had to, I'd just stay there and stand my ground and possibly get arrested because I think that'd be funny. Um, and so they, after that, they told me, yeah, you know, that was a good answer to that question, uh, and you know, you got the job. And I was really scared because I was like, oh, God, like, I didn't think I was going to get it. I was kind of like half in, half out about even coming back. And I would ask Denny, uh, the editor-in-chief at the time, he told me, I asked him, hey, man, so how do you prepare for this? What do you do? What, 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 like, how do you, like, on the first day, how do I address these people, you know? Because I'm going to be addressing them as their uh, quote-unquote leader, you know? They're going to look to me for, for, for advice or help. And, I'm, and he's like, man, really, there's no way you can prepare for it. There's a, you just have to jump in and uh, pretend you know what you're doing. Like, so you got to know the day of right away? Uh, uh, it was a few days after, I think a day after, uh, where they had all the... Uh, actually, no, it was, it was the same day. Um, 
it was I think three other applicants and they would after the last one they sat in the office for like an hour hour and a half and then Mr. So Cameron it's not would, all of you right and all the candidates it's just one at a time one at a time yeah it's one at a time and then he uh, uh, Mr. Cameron came out he's like all right guys so I'm happy to announce you know he went on this whole speech I'm happy to announce the next editor in chief of Talmarks is it was me and it was you know it was it was it was, it was a cool moment, you know, people were congr congratulating me. But, yeah, going back to, to the whole preparation, there was just no way, there's no, like, real plan um, to do it or how to do it. You know, there wasn't any guidelines. And uh, going in, one of the things I learned from Denny was how to deal with people, you know, because the way I kind of am, I'm very, uh, uh, I'm not going to say harsh, but I'm going to say very stern sometimes. Like, I need, I need to learn how to loosen up. Um, but he told me, hey, for, for, you have to talk to people in a way where you're, you're their friend, but you're also their, 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 uh, like, uh, the, well, the editor in chief, like their boss kind of, and, and they, and, you know, if they have a job, you have to kind of push them into doing it, but in a way where you don't, uh, rub them the wrong way, because, you know, people, obviously, if someone were to come up to you and be like, hey, do this, like, and, and, you know, and they tell you in that way, you're going to be like, uh, no, like, I'm not going to do that, you know, you're being rude. And so he, he told me, like, you have to uh, really gauge people on how, how, because each person is, is, is different. And some might react to, to people being stern to them, like, yeah, this guy's right, you know. But some people might not, and some people just might just push away and just, like, gradually recede from doing anything. Um, and that was one of the things I had to learn. Like, I had to change myself, like, uh, in terms of that kind of aspect of my personality. Because I'm very uh, demanding, I'm very, um, like, like I, 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 it's hard. Like, I, I have understanding about, like, certain things where people are like, oh, you know, something happened or came up, but sometimes like it's hard for me to take excuses. Um, so it was one of the things I had to learn pretty early on to, to not kind of do that with people. And now, um, the people that ran against you, um, do you remember them? Like, uh, did you work with them and stuff? Uh, I do remember. One of them was uh, Luis Guzman. Uh, he, he was there when I first started. I think he was the opinion editor and then multimedia, I believe. Um, and who else was there? I think I, and when I was running, I think it was um, Sebastian Echeverry, which was actually the editor in chief of this last semester. Um, I had I had only run into him or met him at the time, like a few times, and um, like he was a, a good guy. He, he did pretty good work. Uh, and then I think the other one was um, I forgot who it was. I want to say. Uh, no, it wasn't Carlo. That was the last semester with uh, Sebastian. I forgot who. I, well, I know it was me, Luis. Um, who did I just mention? Um, Sebastian. Uh, Sebastian. I think he did. He run. I'm. I'm, I'm not confusing. I'm. I'm. I'm pretty confused. I. I my memory is kind of funny right now. I haven't had my coffee, so uh, I remember them. Yeah. Um, How was, soon was the uh, interview after the submitting the letter? Uh, it was, uh, I think, a, uh, the week before he, he mentioned it in the beginning of class. Hey, you know, now we're accepting um, uh, letters for editor-in-chief, you know. And he told us, even if you don't want the job or, you know, you, you feel like you're not ready to do it, you know, it's a learning process. See what kind of questions we ask, you know, how, what do we expect from editor-in-chief. Um, and then the week later would be the f interviews. Oh, that's fast. Mm -hmm. And then the announcement is made, like, uh in the class like the next week or like do you remember the day that the interview was was it like a friday or it was um a thursday i believe um the interviews were i i think or i'm pre pretty sure i think they were stacked together or there would be two interviews like uh depending on how many it was like two interviews on tuesday and then two the last two on thursday and then they would sit in the office uh and then make a decision, and then they would announce it right then, at, right after, whoever, to whoever was there, you know, we're happy to announce the next editor in chief. And then in the class, the actual journalism class, they would announce it formally, like, hey, so we did the applications, we did the interviews, and we were happy to announce the new editor in chief, so and so. And then that's how they, the, the class, got to know who was going to be the next editor in chief. And then uh, afterwards, you went on to another position? Online editor, yeah. Um, it was hard going back to. to it was hard going back from editor in chief to just uh, another editor position, because uh, and I got that from from Denny because he he was already on his way to transfer when I was editor in chief, 
but he would point things out and then you know like he would see things and then I would notice he he no noticed things that we were doing and he I knew he wanted to say something but you know he wouldn't because like I felt I guess he felt he was in his place and I got that I got that feeling where uh, when Sebastian got in chief um, I I saw things or the way he would run things um, uh, I, I wouldn't necessarily say bad like oh you know you could could do this whatever but it like because those those were mistakes I made too. And since I had see, I, I see him from the outside perspective, I'm like, oh, hey, Sebastian, you know, you you could do this or do that. And it was hard to for me to not always, because there's a moment, or there, there's a point in time where it's like, okay, now it's helpful, and now it's just annoying. Now you're being a, a overbearing, micromanaging like guy or whatever. And for online, it was it was this different set of work where it was, um, I was bas basically the 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 one that ran the entire online site, and it was. I understood the frustrations of, of, of Maria when, when she was on it because it was like people aren't, aren't turning in their stories uh, with, f with photos and with online it's all photos like it's all visual so if you don't have photos the online site just looks drab and boring and you know and, and it, it's from the on editor tells the the individual staff or the editor and then like yeah, it has to be addressed as a whole and did you have to like interview or did you tell him like okay I want to come back to this position or um, no, for, for editor position, the other editor positions, it's, it's not, su not such a harrowing or difficult or drawn out interview. It's more like the, once the editor in chief is, is, is selected, that editor in chief is then in charge of selecting the, the next, uh, editorial staff. So what that editor in chief would do is go to, to, to address the staff and say who, who's coming back, you know, and maybe, um, say the edit news editor had like a, an assistant editor, I guess, or, uh, Associated is what we call them, or the copy editor, and they're like, hey, you know, this guy or this 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 girl, or woman actually, hey, peace style, um, um, is you know she she's been helping me here, she's been helping me with this, and they seem like they're pretty capable for the job. You know, you might consider them, and uh, or sometimes the other would just would just choose someone that might catch their attention or who might have been doing back work in the background, like really good work, and they're just not they're just not uh, as involved or kind of quiet. You know, maybe not really comfortable with, with the editors as a staff yet to, to interact with us, you know. So how did you go about, like, uh, picking yours? Um, actually, it was between me and, uh, I forgot who else was. Oh, uh, 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 my friend Grester, he wanted to be online. Um, uh, and, but he, uh, act, uh, at first it was, I wanted to be managing editor, which was kind of like the, like the, like if the editor-in-chief isn't around, it's, I'm the one that's kind of like making sure that they're not you know, goofing off too much or, or doing, and doing the work. And then eventually I was like, no, I kind of want to do online stuff because I don't want to deal with people. You know, at that point I was just, I was kind of, I was tired of, of t dealing with a lot of people because um, uh, a lot of things happened in my editor-in-chief semester. I was like, okay, I'm, I'm tired of this little drama. Um, and so I just want to be on myself in this corner and, you know, just be a hermit, you know, just, just manage the online site and, you know, occasionally grumble out like, you know, like I need help or whatever.